안녕하십니까. 저는 남성기업의 양세훈입니다. 인사드리겠습니다. 고르지 못한 날씨에도 불구하고 이처럼 많이 찾아주셔 대단히 감사합니다. 그러면 은 EBS의 세미나를 위해서 본사에서 출장 나온 분들을 소개시키겠습니다. 아시아 담당 부사장인 마이크 스미드입니다. 윌 아시아 담당 세미나입니다. 다음 제리 시니어 에이션 그리고 어, 오늘 세미나는 1시 반부터 시작해서 5시까지 예, 예정돼 있는데 전반부 세션은 현재 사용 중인 서버들의 업데이트 사항을 알려드리겠고요. 후반부 예, 후반부 사항은 어, 4K와 4K 로드맵에 대해서 어, 말씀을 드리겠습니다. 그리고 어, 중간중간에 관련되어지는 부분에 대해서는 장비 시연을 함께 하도록 하겠습니다. 그리고 마지막으로 어, Q&A 시간을 갖도록 하고요. 5시까지 예, 잘 마치도록 하겠습니다. 잘 부탁드립니다. 감사합니다. So hello everybody, welcome. Thank you for taking the time and making the effort to come and see us today. Um, my name is Mike Snell. I'm the Vice President for Sales uh, for the APAC region. I'd just like to say thank you to Namsung for arranging this, this seminar today. We're uh, very proud of our partnership with, with, uh, with Namsung. And uh, we have a long history with Namsung and, uh, and doing business with them. And we also have, I'd also like to say thank you to all of you as well, our, our customers. We're very proud to have you all as our, our customers and proud to have you here today. So thank you very much for, uh, for coming here today. This is uh, very good. Um, today we're going to present to you our, our, um, our latest product updates um, that will start from now till through 2016 and also take you through the roadmap of uh, 4K. And, uh, and the developments that we're, um, we're going to show you today. Um, so here today, as you see, we've had uh, Jerry from, uh, from EVS. He'll be doing the, the demonstrations today. And Will will be doing uh, the main presentation um, to you. Um, so if you like, I'll just hand you over to Will now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mike, and thank you everybody for coming this afternoon. Uh, so today uh, we're going to go through, as Mike mentioned, a number of uh, uh, various aspects of the current generation server updates. And then after the break in the afternoon, we'll start to look at some of what's possible today with EVS solutions in 4K. And then moving forward over the next two years, what will be possible in 2016 and 2017 for the hardware evolution of the EVS servers with a specific focus on, on 4K. 참고로 어, 매끄러운 진행을 위해서 어, 통역은 최소화하고 간단히 요약하거나 키 워드에 대해서만 말씀을 드리겠습니다. So to start the first thing that I would like to uh, to to discuss and uh, we will hand over at various points throughout the demonstration uh, throughout the presentation to to Jerry and to Nick for um, some technical presentation. Uh, but also, if you have any questions on specific topics, um, I don't mind, uh, you can either yell them out or wait until afterwards and we can discuss them. <laughs> so the first thing is uh, that I would like to discuss um, is about the uh, updates for the current generation of X-T3, which is what we call the channel max configurations. So basically, with the now, with the XT3s now, we really simplify the offering that we can propose. So we still have the 4RU server and the 6RU server, but now each of those servers will come in two models. So for the 6U server, we will have a 6U 6-channel six six box. 
So only the physical logical channels will be available. Then what we will do is we will introduce what we now call the channel max server, which is 12 channels and beyond. So in the 12 channel, in the channel max version, you'll be able to do a variety of 12 channel configs and some configurations in super slow motion, which will be even higher than 12 channels. For the 4U server, we keep, uh, keep manufacturing of the 4U server. So again, for the base, uh, hardware base, we have a 4U 4 channel. So again, only the logical, physical video channels are available. And then we will also introduce the 4U channel max server, which will bring the 4U up to uh, eight channels capability. XT3 channel max update model simply model model so with the channel max, uh, basically the idea is that we really enable uh, more with the, with the current generation of servers. So with the channel max configurations, we, we allow for all of the multicam LSM configurations. We allow for all of the LSM parallel control with IP director. And we also allow for the new dual LSM mode, which I'll uh, show you in a minute. So with the channel max in basic uh, single operator LSM mode, we can do a couple of new configurations like 10 in two out, eight in four out, and six in six out. All of those available with parallel IP director control. IP director parallel control을 얘기하는 것은 RCU하고 같이 혼용해서 쓰실 수 있다는 얘기가 되겠습니다. And with the spot box configurations in XT3 6U channel max, we'll be able to do 12 in, uh, 10 in one out with mix on one channel, 8 in two out with mix on one channel, and 6 in three out with mix on one channel. So with the new channel max configurations, both for the 4U machine and the 6U machine, there will be a huge range of new configurations, both for single operator, dual operator, uh, regular camera, and super slow camera. So what we are going to produce from, uh, from EVS headquarters is a configuration summary document for all of the different server models. So this one will be published for your, for your reference, uh, and it will, be, it will basically give a list of all of the possible channel configurations from Multicam 1402 and onwards. Uh, Channel configuration input and output에 대한 것을 별도로 릴리스를 uh, 하겠답니다. So one of the most important uh, functionalities of the of the Channel Max XT3 is the dual LSM mode. So the dual LSM mode, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on just to explain. Uh, but basically, the idea is that with the dual LSM mode of a 6U XT3 Channel Max server. We now allow each operator to configure completely independently their own LSM environment. So they'll, each operator will have personal settings linked to their user account and definable subsets of the overall camera Im inputs. This allows for a much better return on investment for an XT3 12 channel channel max server by allowing two operators to share the machine as if it, each of them were using a single machine. Uh, XT3가 하나지만 두 명의 오퍼레이터가 공유해서 각각 독립적으로 전혀 옆에 채널과 간섭을 받지 않고 수행을 할수 있습니다. 그리고 또 원하시게 되면은 싱글 오퍼레이터가 싱글 오퍼레이터 모드로도 가능합니다. So the configurations that will be supported in uh, dual LSM mode will be two times four in, two out, 
or two times three in, three out. The limitations of this, in 1401, there's going to be no super motion configurations, but these will become available depending on the customer requirements. So if you have super motion configurations that you want to use in dual operator mode, please let uh, Mr. Yang or, or myself know and we can feed this back to our product development team. And the PGMs in the dual, uh, dual LSM mode always have to be split evenly. So you have to have, uh, if one operator has two outputs, the other operator also has to have two outputs. Yes. So uh, this is a diagrammatical, diagrammatical representation of the uh, dual LSM. As you can see in the single box, we have, uh, we have two operators, uh, both of them using four in and two out, uh, four in and two out for the second operator, and each operator with a LSM connect and an RCU. So what I might do is pass over to, to Nick and to, to Jerry just to explain a little bit about the technical setup we have here and so you can have a look at the, uh, the dual LSM uh, configuration specifically. Right now? Yeah, I think so. So here we have uh, XT3, which is already equipped with the dual RSM mode. So in this box, now the configuration is running uh, 8 in, 4 out. So here we have two monitors. On the left is the 4, 4 in, 2 out. And the second one is the second 4 in, 2 out. Okay. If I'm the first operator, I can here to browse my, to browse my content. And then I can do a replay with the slow motion. And on the second operator, they can also do his own job to do the replay, make a clip. And each of us, we won't affect another operator in the operation. OK. And for the console, we have a RSM tablet for us to give the clip name, give the keywords, or give the rating. So both of us, we have our console to work on it. Okay. 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 이제 타블렛을 사용한 LSM 커넥터라는 장비를 사용을 하셔서 쉽게 본인이 만든 어떤 컨텐츠를 별도로 관리를 하실 수가 있습니다. Okay, cool. So again, uh, later on if you if you'd like to have a have a bit of a play with the uh, with the uh, dual LSM mode, feel free to to jump on. You can see that all of the cameras are completely uh, in independently assigned. And also, very importantly, in this setup, uh, both operators have a completely independent configurable multi-viewer as well. So the XT3 channel max server now has dual, uh, dual multi-viewer output. Moving on, the next thing I would like to discuss is the new super motion configurations that we support in the XT3 channel max servers. Uh, because what, you, what we will be able to show you with the next upcoming slides is to, to show you really how many uh, different configurations in the Supermotion we can support, taking the channel configurations well beyond our traditional limit of uh, 12 channels up all the way to you know, a much higher channel count. So basically these, these uh, configurations that I'll show you over the next few slides are available in 1401 uh, XT3 channel max servers. So basically what we say now is that all high frame rate cameras are enabled within EVS uh, X-T3 environments. And I am very comfortable and confident to also say that we by far have the highest number of frame rate uh, camera configurations available in a slow motion replay server. One very important thing is that we now support two HTC 4300 4K cameras with eight times super slow per X-T3 server. And you'll see why this is very impressive in some of the later slides, because it really means that our channel configurations are getting very, uh, very high-density uh, channel count. 
So if we review some of the cameras, uh, at the moment we, the camera landscape is kind of fairly a good split between Grass Valley, Sony, Hitachi, uh, Panasonic and Ikigami. Uh, so you can see, and I can provide copies of this slide later, you have a, uh, a fair amount of, um, of various camera manufacturers with cameras that support a wide variety of, uh, of frame rates. So the ones that we've been working very closely with uh, more recently, I've highlighted in red. So the HDC 4300, which can do two, three, four, six, and eight times super slow uh, in 1080i. And again, the same in 1080p. Uh, the Panasonic Vericam HS, which can do four times in 1080p. And the Grass Valley LDX86, which is six times on uh, 1080i uh, in 3G connections. So these three cameras are you know, quite, uh, quite advanced and uh, are very well integrated into the, into the EVS uh, X-T3 solution. So just to review a couple very quickly, uh, so the Sony F55, uh, this is, does four times and six times super motion, as well as the Grass Valley LDX86, which also supports up to six times super motion. And as you can see, the kind of configuration that we now support for this uh, LDX is two six times super slow in, plus two regular camera in, plus two outputs. So with the Channel Max server, this is effectively supporting uh, 16, is my math right on that? Six, 16 channels on a, on a single uh, EVS XT3 channel max server. Moving on to the HDC 4300, which is the eight times super slow camera. You can see we support some even more impressive channel configurations. So with this, we can do two times, eight times Sony camera in and two outputs, which is 18 channels. And uh, sorry, uh, yeah, that's right. And two times, uh, eight times, plus two in, plus one out. So you can see the server configurations here. This one is already effectively supporting 19 channels in a in a single box by able to be doing two eight times super motion cameras into a single XT3. So with the Supermotion, uh, these are some of the more common configurations that we now support. Uh, you'll see at the bottom, uh, quite interestingly, the U-Motion 10-phase camera. The license for this is now included in the regular Super Slow license. So that means that with a regular Supermotion license on EVS server, you can do two times, three times, four times, six times, eight times, and ten times uh, on a single machine. Uh, and as again, as you can see, in a lot of these configurations, the channel count is uh, well beyond 12 channels. Uh, and as I mentioned, going up to, for example, 19 channels in the uh, Sony 8 times uh, configuration. Ultra super motion, 이런 것들을 지원하고 같이 normal camera하고 연동해서 사용하실 수 있게 한그 목적이 있습니다. So why is EVS better for 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 super motion uh, super motion configurations? We have audio with the super motion clips and no limitation in the audio usage during the during the replay. Uh, we can network the record trains between variety of EVS servers, so no waiting to transfer the material and reuse it in another XT3. As I mentioned, we can record two eight times super motion cameras and still have room for two additional inputs. I don't think anybody else on the market can even get close to this kind of channel configuration on a, on a, uh, on a video server. Uh, we have EVS's trusted loop recording Obviously, it's a very reliable server that does not restart during events. No need to clear the content from the server day to day, and it works with existing XT3s. So, uh, for all of for all customers that have existing XT3s, there's no need to buy a whole new server to be able to integrate with these configurations. Your any existing XT3 on the market can be upgraded to Multicam 14, even if it doesn't necessarily have the capability to do the, the 12 channel and beyond configurations. 즉 현재 운영 중인 XT3를 업그레이드만 하기 때문에 새로운 서버를 사야 하는 신규 투자가 필요하지 않다는 것입니다. Okay, so the the next thing that I would like to discuss which is 
now available with the, uh, in the EVS range of tools is some updates for the FCO product range. So the FCO product range is a, a family of live tools which uh, brings more editorial value, uh, value to the LSM operator. So basically the idea is that by the, with the addition of a 3U hardware solution, which couples with a XT3 and a LSM controller, uh, connecting via standard networking protocols, uh, it adds the capability for a single LSM operator to be able to do gra uh, additional graphics and telestration on top of their regular replay services. So while there's a, a, a quite a vast range of FCO products in the EVS solution package, the two that I want to focus on today is FCO Paint, firstly, and then FCO FX Reveal, secondly. And then FCO Paint is uh, FX reveal two strong mirror on to the Yes, so just uh, just the, fir the first one that we will show is uh, FCO Paint. So FCO Paint is a telestration tool which combines the telestration and instant replay to tell a story and to analyze the game. Basically, the idea is that it allows sports broadcasters to stand out. Uh, by adding a variety of telestration elements with the same level of speed that they can do a regular slow motion replay. Uh, it also has no additional requirements for a second graphics operator. So the existing LSM operator, assuming that they're a reasonable LSM operator, is able to add the telestration themselves on a very straightforward touch screen um, uh, or with, uh, with the mouse uh, just on a second screen, which will add that graphics elements to the additional PGM output of the XT3. 그러니까 uh, FCO Paint는 강점이 에, <웃음> 추가로 그래픽을 위한 오퍼레이터가 필요 없으며 uh, LSM을 운영하는 바와 같이 손쉽게 즉각적으로 빨리 처리를 하실 수 있다는 것입니다. So you can see in the FCO Paint, we have a range of, uh, of key features. Um, so there's a, a variety of tools that are integrated into the LSM environment. So we can do straight or freehand lines and arrows, single player marked uh, circles and crosses, polygon uh, or uh, areas or spotlights from fixed points or from moving points, highlighters and magnifiers, and player name tags, which you can then animate with key points to, to track that particular player. Each tool, the look and feel, is completely customizable, so you can fit it to match your, uh, your, uh, your own graphics charts. And it also has chroma key feature to draw the tools on the pitch underneath the, the players as well. And one very important thing to note, unlike some of our other graphics tools, this is a multi-sport solution, so there's no need to calibrate with a, with a clean feed. Uh, you can simply just uh, manage all of that in the software and go live uh, whenever your operator is ready. So I think what I do now is uh, pass back to, to, to Jerry and to Nick. Um, so I leave a, a diagrammatical representation of the setup here, but I'll let them explain in a little bit more detail and show you some of the, the tools that we have available. XT3 PGM Shino output key를 깔아서 paint를 superimpose 시키는 것입니다. Okay, so here we have two different monitors. So on the right hand side, this is the monitor coming from the FCO pane. Okay, so here on the VGA screen, we are receiving the live feed from the server. Okay, on the left hand side, we have another monitor. This is the output from the FCO server with graphics. Okay, so for example, here I want to do a highlight maybe on this player, what we can do is here we can select a, a graphic and we point on the player, okay? And then we just save it, okay? We can continue, okay, maybe to the next one. Here I want to put uh, 
arrow. Okay, so maybe this player will come to here to catch the ball. Okay, so I s save it, and then we can do a replay. Okay, so let's say if we do a replay here, you will see the graphic. First, we apply it with a spotlight. Okay, so the uh, you can mention something here. Okay, the player is going to catch the ball, blah, 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 something like that. And then continue. We can continue the player. And to the second shot, okay, this player will come here maybe to catch the ball, to shoot, or to something else. Okay? Okay, FCO라고 하는 PC의 인풋으로 들어가게 되어 있고 그 들어오는 인풋을 오른쪽 그림에서 지금 보시는 거고요. 여기에서 하단에 있는 어떤 그래픽 툴들을 이용을 하셔서 저장을 하시게 되면은 왼쪽 FCO라고 하는 PC의 아웃풋 그림을 왼쪽에 있는 모니터처럼 직접 보실 수가 있습니다. 이렇게 작업을 하시는 방법은 LSM을 쓰실 때 일반적으로 마크 기능 많이 사용을 하시는데 마크로 기록을 하신 다음에 그 위치부터 그래픽 작업을 하시면 은 자동적으로 FCO PC 안에 저장이 되고 그 마크 부분을 찾아가시면 은 왼쪽 그림에서 좀 전에 시험 보셨던 것처럼 그대로 시연을 하실 수가 있습니다. So I think the uh, I think the probably the most important thing to remember with the with the FCO Paint is just the speed uh, that we have available to to add these uh, these elements. You can see when Jerry was adding just a spotlight and an arrow for the replay, this could realistically be your first replay. That's how fast you you have the possibility to to add the uh, the elements. Actually, 모든 작업을 신속하게 처리할 수 있다는 것입니다. 손쉽게. Okay, so the next of the uh, FCO tools that I would uh, like to introduce is uh, called FCO FX Reveal. FCO FX uh, is a uh, another of the FCO tools which allows you to add a series of graphics elements to um, uh, playlists on your EVS server. So basically the idea is that it eliminates you having to go to complex post-production uh, and you can deliver fast, worry-free special effects on some rundowns. So the FCO reveal is a is another uh, subset of the FCO effects package, which allows you to let your data tell the real story. So basically, the idea of the FCO reveal is it enables you to take some kind of data stream and overlay, use that data stream to overlay onto the video as a uh, as a graphics element. Graphic element를 손쉽게 플레이리스트에 삽입해서 플레이백을 시켜서 효과를 낼수 있는 것인데 그 효과라고 하는 것은 실로 사용하기에 따라서 굉장히 다양합니다. 예를 들어서 지금 그 농구공이 골대 들어가려고 하는데 그 스피드라든가 또는 어떤 그 충격 배구 같은 데서 스파이크를 할 적에 
So in short, it allows for a, a stream of metadata to be married to a particular picture based on a, a, a time code value. So this also means that the data can be displayed graphically along with the replay. So often if you can show a shot clock in the corner, that's fine, but then if you want to go back and review that to do the replay, you won't have the shot clock synced with the, with the video. So in the demo that we're going to show you now, basically the idea is that we take the uh, RS422 feed of a shot clock and the time clock for a basketball match and display that graphically on the video uh, synced in real time to the, to the actual shot clock. So this, can be, this is very important because it means that not only can you overlay this uh, graphics elements in real time to your video, but it also means that it can be used in the replay mode and it will also be retained through to the, through to the archive as well. So although the, what we're going to show you is a, a fairly simple example of this by taking the, the shot clock and the game clock from a basketball match, the real question is that what do you want to do with this data? Uh, there is effectively endless possibilities. Uh, you know, if you're covering some car racing, we can take the speedometer uh, at the time of a crash and you know, use that with the replay to show the deceleration of the car into the corner. If you have some biometrics like a heart rate monitor or some uh, uh, measure of the power of a punch in boxing, this can immediately be transferred onto the screen in real time taken from the, from the, uh, the data feed maybe a GPS of a, of, a, of a football player as they run around the pitch so you can track them more easily. For baseball, it could be the power of the hit or the speed of the pitch, which could be instantly taken through the FCO reveal. Uh, for golf, again, the power of the swing or some ang angular information that you can take into the FCO reveal to use as a graphic element to overlay onto the, onto the video. Golf so again, I pass over to, to Jerry and to Nick to explain in a little bit more detail. Uh, but basically what you can see here is that this is the standard FCO server but in the, uh, via the data, data port, what we're actually taking is the data from the scoreboard, which in this case is a Dactronics and uh, OES scoreboard, coming into the FCO server to display the, the, the shot clock and the game clock on the video. So here on the monitor, as uh, Will said, in the middle we have the graphic which is already overlay on the live. Okay, so here you will see this is the data coming from the scoreboard. Okay, and if I go into play of this this match, you will see when the game start, the countdown clock will start counting. Here we go, when the ball falls in, you see the clock is starting to come down. And when the game is stopped, both clock will be stopped. And the clock is following to the stadium clock scoreboard. They are all synchronized. Yeah, 실질적으로 지금 타임이 멈춰 있는 상태인데 볼이 들어가는 순간부터 이제 데이터가 흘러가면서 이런 식으로 그래픽을 따로 내보낼 수 있는 기능이 있고 어 이거 외에도 야구나 골프 등에서 속도라든지 또는 여러 필요한 어떤 정보들을 지금 보시는 것 같은 이런 기능으로 구현을 하실 수가 있습니다.
Okay, so again, I think uh, one of the one of the important things to to remember specifically about this about the uh, FCO reveal is that there's actually no operator intervention in this case. Basically, the 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 scorekeeper of the baseball of the basketball game is keeping us uh, keeping. Uh, track of the time on his own system, mm -hmm. which is then fed to the scoreboard, uh, simultaneously fed to the EVS server, where we can use that data live on the, uh, on the, uh, on the material. Next up, I would like to discuss about the new XT Nano configurations. So along with the, uh, the new release of the XT3 Channel Max, we also release an updated version of XT Nano. Mm. So in the uh, Multicam 1402, uh, which is early next year, we will release XT Nano 8 channel. So the new XT Nano 8 channel will be able to do six in, two out. Uh, one super slow three times plus three in plus two out in both 720p and 1080i. 그러니까 XT Nano도 종전에 맥시멈 여섯 채널 four in에 two out까지 사용하실 수 있던 것을 six in에 two out까지 확장을 하실 수가 있습니다. 이로 인해서 삼 배속 슈퍼 슬로우 카메라와 혼용해서, 어, we we uh, we realize that now that we are able to do eight channel in the in what's supposed to be the low cost uh, budget server of EVS is you know quite uh, quite powerful. But the important thing to remember with the Nano is that the other limitations are still uh, remain in place. So a single codec, um, no super motion configurations higher than three times. Uh, and um, no SDTI networking, I think most importantly, is the three limitations for the Nano. So if you have standalone OB trucks, like or smaller regional OB trucks, I think this is uh, now with the eight-channel model, it's very, very powerful. Yeah, uh, but still, uh, XT Nano is not a standard OB SDTI network is not available. It is not a super slow camera for 300 or more times. What is the last one? Uh, the SDTI. I, I said the, the problem. Oh, so SDTI. First one. Uh, code, single codec. Oh, single yeah. codec. Yeah. Codec is single codec, but the user is able to change the code. AVC Intra, ProRes 422, DNX HD, and the user is able to use the code. 골라서 하나를 사용하실 수 있습니다. Okay, and uh, and finally for for the first session, uh, I would like to spend a little bit of time to discuss more about the entertainment workflows, uh, specifically focusing on the new XS3, but in addition to that, to also explain and show a little bit about the. Uh, IP link for Adobe and for Final Cut Pro for post production integration. 첫 번째 세션에서 어, 마지막에 해당이 되어지는 건데요. 어, XX 프로덕션 서버가 XX3라고 한 걸로 업데이트가 됐습니다. 그래서 여기에 인제스트 되어진 파일을 IP 링크를 활용해서 어, 아도비 프레미에서 마치 로컬에 있는 데이터를 찾듯이 손쉽게 찾아서 편집에 활용을 하실 수 있고 어, 하는 등 에, 아도비와의 그 손쉬운 연동을 보여드리도록 하겠습니다. So with the XS3, we now allow for a more uh, uh, granular or specific ordering uh, options. So we still retain the two server models, so the uh, 6U XS3 and the 4U XS3. Uh, the 6U now comes by default with a series of um, uh, what used to be uh, optional items like 10 gig connectivity uh, and a variety of other things like mix on one channel, uh, proxy option, etc. So now with the 6U XS3, we are able to sell in 4 channel, 6 channel, 8 channel, 10 channel or 12 channel configurations. And with the 4U XS3, we're able to sell two channel, four channel, six channel, and eight channel. 
the 10 gig is also now available as an option on the 4U XS3, which was never the case in the past. Uh, but with the eight channel mode, we think it was very important to allow for 10 gig to support the number of streams that we can, uh, we can ingest. I'm not sure, Jerry, if you have some of the, the details about 10 gig and uh, how many streams we can support in real time. But, huh? 13. Th 13, 13 streams in real time on the, on the 10 gig. So now with the 10 gig capabilities, both on the um, XS as well as the XT access or X file, uh, we support a, a much larger, a, a higher uh, stream count in real time. So what is the bit rate? <laughs> I years, think 13 two. at 120, right? Yeah, yeah 120. 120. Yeah. So on top of the XS3, uh, you know, now that we're talking about some more of the entertainment workflows, I uh, would also like to introduce you to the IP Link plugin, which is a plugin in this case for Adobe Premiere, which allows the Adobe Premiere users to search, browse, and import and export content from the IP director database, from the EVS environment. So basically the idea in, uh, in the IP link, and you can see here what we have is an actual uh, uh, screenshot of the, the tool sitting inside the Adobe. Uh, you can search for clip assets and log content uh, within the IP director database. Uh, you can view the clips and the metadata by simply uh, importing them into your source, source monitor and uh, previewing them. From that point, you can start to edit that material in the Adobe. Uh, so you can mark in and out points which are directly related to the log points that may have been created previously in IP Director, uh, and uh, then export that content back to the EVS, finished edits for playout. We also have a, a highly integrated uh, export tool which allows for the center playback to be much more straightforward. Should I pass it hmm? This one? Or this one? No. Oh. IP Link라고 하는 이제 EBS 플러그인입니다. 어, 어도비 프리미어 안에서 사용이 가능하신 프로그램이고 어, 사용 용도는 기존의 EBS 시스템 안에 있는 어떤 데이터들을 관리하거나 사용하실 때는 반드시 EBS EBS 툴이 있어야지만 가능하셨는데 그 동일한 환경을 어도비 프리미어 안에서 지금 보시는 화면과 같이 열으실 수도 있고 EBS에서 사용했던 어떤 키워드나 이런 자료들을 어도비에서 동일하게 찾아서 어, 어도비 안에서 이제 편집이나 엑스포트까지 할수 있도록 도와주는 플러그인입니다. So 참고로 어, IP 디렉터 TV에다가 그 팜코아라고 하는 프로덕션 아셋 매니지먼트 팜코아라고 하는 어, 동시 접근을 할수 있는 어, 소프트를 깔아야 됩니다. 그래야 그 아도비에 깔린 IP 링크하고 아. 연동이 되어집니다. Okay, cool. So, any questions on the first session so far? <웃음> 질문이 있으시면 해주시기 바랍니다. So I think what we'll do is uh, uh, it, it makes more sense if you want to see the Adobe uh, plugin in more detail to come down and have a look now with, uh, with Jerry and Nick. Maybe they can review in more detail on the smaller laptop screen. Um, but otherwise, uh, we come back to discuss about the 4K roadmap in 10 minutes. Okay, 10분간 break time. Then the second session. They can look at the Adobe now in the break with Jerry. Yeah. If they Before want. break? Before, yeah. Or now, now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They will show that uh, uh, Adobe and IP Inc. are used to be able to show you the same But during the break, if they want to see it. Yeah. So, 
피식을 취하면서 가까이 오셔서 보셔도 되겠습니다. 
Sure, but Hong Kong. I mean, I'm sure people in Hong Kong get paid.
That's fine. Uh, 그러면 uh, 후반부 세션을 시작하도록 하겠습니다. 시작하기 전에 uh, 휴식 중에 그 IP 링크에 대한 것은 개별적으로 어, 확인을 하셨으리라고 믿겠습니다. 만약에 필요로 하면 나중에 끝에서 다시 한번 더 하기로 하고요. 말씀드린 대로 4K 오늘과 4K 내일에 대해서 설명을 해드리겠습니다. Okay, so uh, for this session, uh, I would like to discuss uh, about the EBS current and future capabilities in 4K. So basically the idea or the agenda for this afternoon is we will review the current 4K offerings, including some new uh, configurations for the XS3 uh, and XT3, as well as have a quick look at the FCO Zoom and to also introduce the XIP, which is a new product released, which will be quite relevant for 4K workflows moving forward. So, um, so this is a uh, you know a roadmap presentation. So I don't mind uh, if you you know take some photos or things like that, but uh, please don't share it <laughs> too too widely. Uh, maybe not on your websites or something. Uh, so basically, uh, of course, we will continue our live focus through all aspects of our business: uh, EVS sports, EVS entertainment, news, and media. Through all of the servers, the live tools, uh, the live PAM multimedia, editing media and infrastructure, and the video production systems. For the 4K focus, I will primarily be looking at the servers and what will be possible in the servers in 4K. So, to start, I think uh, we should again relook at what we can currently do in EVS environment in, in 4K. Uh, so firstly, uh, and most simply, we can do three channels in 4K on an EVS XT3 or EVS XS or XS3. 현재 EVS에서는 4K를 어, 3G 네 가닥을 사용해서 한 채널을 구성하고 있습니다. 그래서 열두 채널일 경우에 네 가닥을 나누게 되면은 세 채널 4K를 지원할 수 있습니다. So, both of these servers are also capable in the same configuration of doing 12 channels in HD. Obviously with the Channel Max 6U server or the XS3 12 channel server. With the 4K, we can support interop with uh, post production or archive via transcoding. At this stage, 예, 지금 현재 단계에서는 후반부 작업을 하기 위해서는 트랜스코딩을 실시간으로 거쳐야 되겠습니다. With 4K as well, we support all LSM operations, all spot box operations, and we also include the 4K zoom for HD productions using some 4K uh, content, say some 4K cameras. This is done using the FCO zoom uh, uh, of the FCO range. 현행 세 채널 4K 서버는 어, LSM이 지원하는 모든 기능을 지원하고 스팟박스의 기능도 함께 지원하고 있습니다. 그리고 HD로 LSM 제작을 위해서는 4K 줌밍을 지원하고 있습니다. So with the current servers, uh, in the 6U XT3 and 6U XS and XS3, we can support the following configurations. So uh, one in, one out LSM and spot box, two in, one out LSM and spot box, one in, two out LSM and spot box, three in, zero out, and zero in, three out, both only in spot box mode, of course, because this won't work with uh, LSM. Then the hard one is two gate configuration on spot box model. Can we check in the machine with the for you? We can support one in one out LSM and spot box two in zero out or zero in two out. And remember, this again is the for you XS3 XS and XT3 XT3 now XX 
공이 적용되어지는 컨피규레이션 되겠습니다. So what can we do with this 4K content at the moment? We can use our, all of our standard live replay functionality. So multi-camera control, instant replay and LSM, on-the-fly editing and highlights packages, and analysis and live effects. Multi-cam is used, instant replay, then we can start the penjib. For the highlight editing, we can also support uh, playlist to timeline converging, uh, conversion retaining the transition effects. We can adjust the speed of the elements. Uh, we can support all of the transition effects. Uh, we can jog in the transitions and we can split the 4K elements. So all of these standard highlight editing capabilities of an EVS server are still supported in 4K. With file transfer, uh, so file transfer both between EVS XT3 4K servers and also over gigabit ethernet or 10 gigabit ethernet, we support uh, file transfer uh, yeah, via SDTI or via file-based to, to external um, either archive or post-production environment. Hyoneng HD, SDTI network in XNet, X3 4K server so with the uh, editing media and infrastructure integration in 4K, so you can see in this case, <coughs> we use the example of an XT3 with two 4K inputs. So what we can do is we can export a single file from this in real time to an NLE and coming back to an XT3 as well. So this will generate a single ProRes 4K file for editing in Adobe or uh, Final Cut Pro. So again, it will send it to post-production and then as I mentioned, it will be able to come back to the server uh, in, uh, in close to real time. So, with the 4K workflows as well, uh, it's probably worth mentioning at this point about the FCO Zoom. So, the FCO Zoom is a live replay zooming solution which scales any 16 by 9 region within the source 4K footage in real time. So this actually works in 720p, 1080i, 1080p, and or 4K. Uh, sorry, or 4K. And it makes it easier to provide clearer close-ups of any content highlights, uh, say for controversial calls that the referees may want to zoom into, or simply to zoom in on a particular action point of a match. Um, this is controlled by a touchscreen or by a mouse, and you can define multiple virtual cameras on the same clip to zoom uh, an animated replay sequence uh, to output HD footage within 4K production. One uh, aspect of using the 4K Zoom for regular HD productions is it allows broadcasters and facilities companies 
to start to integrate some 4K environment into their regular HD production. So a good example is uh, what's been done in Australia recently. So for some of the uh, Australian rules football, they produce the regular match in HD, but the field is very, very big, and they don't ever have enough cameras to cover the whole field. So what they did is they simply sat two 4K cameras on top of the stadium to look across the whole field in addition to their HD cameras. And then when they wanted to track a particular action point in the game, they simply switch to the 4K cameras and zoom into the specific area that they want to look at within the, within the pitch. So this is, this is something that uh, is very important for them because it actually helps them to reduce their production costs by not having as many HD cameras to cover all aspects where they can sit, simply sit a 4K camera to look at the entire pitch and still have a HD zoomed in uh, section of the of the game. Zoom uh, 기능을 파워풀하게 사, 어, 사용한 예가 뭐냐면은 HD 같으면은 어, 럭비 경기장을 전체 담기 위해서 여러 대의 카메라가 필요한데 4K 카메라를 두대 사용해서 전 경기장을 잡아놓은 다음에 그 액션 포인트가 되어지는 부분만 줌인을 해서 어, 보여줌으로써 어, 효율을 효율적인 에, 경기 중계를 한 것을 예를 들 수가 있겠습니다. So um, in basic terms this would be the uh, the workflow in uh, in with FCO Zoom. So you would have uh, let's say two 4K cameras coming into an XT3 with a 4K monitor to monitor the HD uh, the 4K signal. The uh, 4K PGM output would come into the FCO Zoom box and have a down converted HD signal which you could then, as I mentioned, integrate back into your regular HD production environment. This workflow is in use now uh, in a number of uh, uh, broadcasters and um, um, uh, what do you call it, like uh, faci facilities companies around the world. So it's been used in the Champions League, in the J League in Japan, for Roland Garros, for the French Open. And uh, Fox Sports in Australia is the example I mentioned for the for the AFL as well. 보이시는 데서는 FCO 줌을 어, 활용해서 어, 중계를 내용을 제작하고 있습니다. <coughs> Moving forward, uh, the last aspect of the current 4K capabilities that I would like to introduce is the what we're calling IP for Live, which is mainly focused around our IP-based workflows, specifically the new uh, video over IP gateway from EVS called XIP. So the XIP is a one new uh, video over IP gateway that allows broadcasters to have a practical and cost-effective transition to IP-based infrastructure. Uh, it can transport multiple flows on single wire and leverage your existing IT infrastructure while maintaining flexibility and scalability for future formats and compression <coughs> schemes. 그래서 현재 XT3 환경과 외부 IP 환경을 연결하는 것을 XIP라고 하는 박스를 통해서 나갈 적에는 먹스를 시키고 들어올 적에는 디먹스를 시켜서 IP 환경과 호환을 유지하고 있습니다. 그 따르는 기준은 SMPT 2020 2022-5와 6에 준하고 있습니다. Is okay? Yes. Okay. So with the gateway, it really allows us as EVS a lot more flexibility because what it means that we can do is we can start to uh, integrate a variety of evolving standards like the Pico Alliance, for example, into a separate device that is external from the server. Obviously, with the server, the development process is much slower for us because there's a lot of testing to retain the level of uh, reliability. Uh, but for this, we can be a little bit faster, a little bit more dynamic, so we can, we can really uh, meet the evolving standards within the XIP box. 
그러니까 4K 스탠다드가 어찌 정의가 될지라도 손쉽게 적응할 수 있는 그런 유연성을 사전에 확보하고 있습니다. XIP를 사용함으로써요. 그래서인그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서그래서
어, 내년 말 4.4 분기에는 HDD를 8 채널까지 동시에 지원을 하기 때문에 HDD도 사용하실 수 있고 4K도 사용하실 수 있도록 제작이 되어집니다. 그리고 중요한 것은 XAVC 클래스 300을 실시간으로 해서 어, 네이티브로 지원한다는 것입니다. 그리고 기능면에 있어서는 현행 LSM이나 스파박스에서 지원되는 주요 특징들이